the whole Daily Wire crew got together for their backstage sit down and it didn't disappoint. A large part of the conversation was about the growing anti-marriage movement being pushed by people like Pearl Davis and others within the Red Pill community. I'm going to show you two videos that highlight two very important points regarding this marriage issue. The first is Jeremy Boring and Candace Owens dragging Pearl Davis pretty good. The second is Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh exposing a major problem with the red pill movement. This is an extremely important cultural issue. If masses of men and women are misinformed and give up on marriage and family, we're screwed as individuals and a society. And I'm gonna tell you why. Let's get into it. Here's the first clip. But there's a real move on parts of the right to oppose marriage now. Uh, it's it's run by the ostensible red pill crowd, which, you know, it's interesting how the meaning of red pill has evolved over the last uh, five years to, to essentially now mean anti, I would say anti-woman. They would say pro-man, but I think it's far beyond pro-man. I think it's decidedly anti-woman in many ways. And you see people who, I think some of them are are bad actors who are peddling, but then you also see people like, like pearly things who, I don't know Pearl, I don't know if she's a bad actor or not. I kind of get the sense that maybe she's just a naive, uh, person being kind of dragged along out of half desire to be famous and half probably hasn't. I, really I didn't know the marriage thing. Uh, I'm very so, pro marriage. So Pearl, Pearl made that argument. Yes. Okay. The so argument men literally men should, should not, not get, get married. married. Okay. Because the institution. But are men listening to that? Like, are men saying that men shouldn't get married, or is that a woman saying that a man shouldn't get married? Well, Pearl, it, I think that there are examples of men saying it as well. But I think Pearl is sort of a, a prominent one of the prominent voices. A lot of the. People but she's I hear not married. Reading, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So then that, that I think that's first, that's, that's a huge thing, right? I mean, obviously it's like listening to people that don't have kids tell you why you shouldn't have kids. Like it <laughs> doesn't really work, right? Because when you're telling them about what changes inside of you when you get married, and I think it's very easy to gravitate towards that. That is a feminist message, not to get married. And if her argument is, if your quarrel is with the courts, I could agree with you. Like, you know, the courts have done tons of things that are awful well, that I disagree. Well, I, I don't even agree necessarily with the courts taking marriage at all. I and mean, it was a church thing and they took it. And this is how we ended up with, with gay marriage rights, which I'm very much opposed to. Well, I would say um, that a big part of the red pill thing that we would all probably agree with is they diagnose actual problems. So right. when Pearl or, or other people in the movement come along and say, this is a major problem in society, right. I almost always agree with them. Yeah. It's when they get to the prescription that I think that, the, that it That's falls right. apart. The prescription being... You know, lashing out at women generally or, or well, embracing the, despair or not, yeah, uh, kind no, of nihilism. That's a feminist message. I mean, it, you, the, that, that is a, a fundamentally to be anti-family. I don't understand how you could identify as a conservative at all yeah. because everything that the left is trying to do, every Marxist principle, every feminist principle is about disrupting, you know, the family unit. It, it's what connects everything from the climate change lobby to don't, you know, don't have kids, the planet's going to die, to yeah. feminism, you know, be like men, we should be like men. It's all a disruption of the family unit. And if you, if you are now arguing in favor of something that's fundamentally Marxist, then you have to examine whether or not you're conservative at all. That would, would be my back to... on that. Has Candace been watching my videos? Seriously, listening to these red pill influencers giving relationship and marriage advice and recommending it not is as like Alex Hormozzi says, getting financial advice from broke people. Even worse, it's like getting financial advice from broke people who are actively engaging in behaviors that will continue to make them broke individuals not married, failed at marriage, and living lifestyles that are actually hostile to marriage and long-term relationship success are the last people that you should be taking advice from. Also, and most importantly, this rhetoric is extremely damaging to us as individuals and society. Successful marriages and families are literally the only thing holding this degenerate society together. A stable, two-parent, mother and father, present in the home, household, nuclear family is the best shot that children have at thriving in this world. Children who come from single-parent households have a four-time greater risk of poverty. They're 80% more likely to commit a crime and go to jail, 75% more likely to experience teen pregnancy, 71% of high school dropouts, 63% of youth suicides happen from kids who come from single-parent homes, and these kids are at significantly higher risk of substance addiction and obesity. The nuclear family is not some political value or talking point. It's a necessity for a thriving society. Candace is right in that the most damaging aspect of Pearl and this Red Pill movement is that it's anti-family. And that is precisely my biggest problem with it as well. Those advocating for it truly have no idea the damage they are doing to the men who follow along with it and the women that these men prey on. Which takes us to Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. 
with the red pill, you know, and, and I've and I've been in many uh, uh, altercations with with the red. I've run afoul of the red pill crowd many times talking about these issues. And the question I've always had for them that they've never answered, and I'd love to hear an answer from any of them, is that, you know, because I agree with 95% of their criticisms, uh, uh, as you point out, the family courts and it's how it's stacked against men and so on and so forth. What's the other option? Like, okay, we agree with all that. So then men should just be alone and, and give up on their, on their bloodline and die and their bloodline is extinguished. Like what you are suggesting is despair. You, you are telling men, men are already feeling despair. They're feeling meaninglessness. They're feeling mm -hmm. lost. They're feeling alone. Uh, they're feeling like everything's stacked against them. And so your answer to them is, yeah, well, just that, that's the, be, be in despair and then die. And my, my point is that, that that's, just, that's just not an okay answer. That can't be the answer. And, and have lots and lots of sex. Well, but that's, that's, that's the- Sterile That's, that's what you said. Although not as much as a married man. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, this is, but this is what you were saying, is that that's how it turns to the anti-woman. Yeah. Because it's not about the despair. The way that you find meaning is then by disparaging the people who have victimized you. Right, in, in any victim-victimizer sort of narrative, when, when there is no actual victim and victimizer and it has to be sort of put together artificially, then the, vic the person who self-perceives as the victim is very likely to then strike out at the person who they perceive as the victimizer. And so for a lot of the red pill men who perceive the woman, the great woman, as the victimizer, the idea is that you lash out at women by having lots of sex with random girls and basically treating them like trash. And it's okay because they said that it's okay with them, but that doesn't, I've never understood the argument that it relieves you of responsibility for treating a woman well just because the woman has consented to be treated badly. It comes down to it, these are the most important questions for men to consider. What's your end goal? What type of life do you want to live? Should you give up on finding a wife, having kids, and the opportunity to build and lead a family? Sure, there is risk in getting married and having a family, but have you considered the risk of not? Are you sure that you don't want to experience what it's like to be a father and have a son or a daughter? Are you sure you don't want to experience that type of love and how it changes you? There are moments that you experience with your son or daughter, with your kids, memories gifted to you that you cannot find anywhere else in human life. Do you want your kids to thrive in this world? Do you want to experience the deepest relationships that this life has to offer that outlast your career or financial success? When it all comes down to it, you get one life. And how do you want to have lived? Andrew Tate said provocatively that he doesn't believe in depression because it doesn't serve him and the type of life that he wants to live. Well, there are those of us who don't believe in divorce. My wife and I don't believe in divorce. It doesn't exist for us. And I don't care what the government says about marriage or what the laws are or what they try to incentivize me or my wife with. Divorce isn't an option. We answer to God and build and raise our family and lives according to to those terms. And guess what? It works. It works. It produces an incredible amount of purpose, meaning, stability, joy, fulfillment in our lives. And it is best for our children, community, nation, and humanity. This is what I mean by it works. It provides and produces those benefits for ourselves and for the whole. The Red Pill Movement is a toxic reaction to feminism. Feminists resent men. Red pill men resent women. A feminist has never met a good man, like a red pill man has never met a good woman. Red pill men attract and prey on damaged women, like a feminist attracts and prey on damaged men. How is it not obvious that this red pill message and movement is one of bitterness that leads to despair and loneliness for men long term? It also leaves women hanging out to dry. Don't fall for it. It's a lie. And there's a better way. And that is what I'm laying out here on my channel.